Good morning. Uh, I have a correction for you. I apparently did not pay attention to the order that I submitted the hymns this week, um, but our opening hymn is actually number 2236, In Your Faith We Sing, hymnal supplement 2236. So please be prepared for that um, after our uh, choral call to worship. So I invite you to stand as you're able, in body or in spirit, and join in singing our opening call to worship. And then please remain standing for our hymn of praise, number 2236. Please stand. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. I'll praise when I'm short and praise when I'm doubting. I'll praise when outnumbered, praise when surrounded. Because praise is the water my enemies drown in. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise.
Uh, please join with me in reciting the Apostles' Creed found on page 881 in your hymnals or in your bulletins. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. today. Waylon and Say. And Say. But Adam, I have something special for you to do today too. Okay? All right. So I have something fun to show you. Are you ready? So we just had Easter. Jesus rose from the dead. And then he spent 40 days on earth doing more good things. And then he went straight up to heaven to be with his father, right? So why did Jesus die on the cross for us? Why did that happen? To save our sins. To save our sins. Captain Bunny. <laughs> and so tell me some of the sins that you think of that Jesus died to save us from. Yell them out. Maybe arguing with your sister. Maybe hitting your brother. Maybe. Or, or, or putting your brother and your sister. Right. Or not listening to mom and dad. And so we do. We want, to, we want to make sure that we have Jesus in our heart. So I want to show you. I'm going to show you something right here, Adam. Have a seat for just a minute. Okay, I want to show you a couple of things that... Maybe people think they have Jesus in their heart, but uh, maybe they don't. All right, so Sam, I'll let you hold. All right, Waylon. All right, so how about you on my this then? You need glasses. Come on, protect your eyes. Okay, who knows what this is? Vinegar. It's vinegar. Have you ever smelled vinegar before? Do you want to smell vinegar today? Yes? Okay. Smell. Pickle. Woo! <laughs> if you want to smell it, come here. It does, it does smell like salt and vinegar chips. You are right. It does. I don't like it. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pour some vinegar in this big measuring cup. Now, it does look like water. So guess what I have? I have water. Thank you. 
you, my assistant. Okay, so first we're going to mix. First we're going to mix vinegar with some things. Hmm? Absolutely not do you have to eat it. But you are, you are going to stir it. Okay, so this is powdered milk. Who drinks milk? I love to drink milk. It is so delicious. This is powdered milk. Watch, bring that cup over here. All right, so we're going to pretend that the powdered milk is us. Or people. It doesn't have to be us, okay? It could just be just people. All right, now, Adam, I want you and I, I want you to help me, pour the vinegar. Remember, the vinegar is in the big one. We're going to pour it in. Now, the vinegar is Jesus. That's it, standing for Jesus today. All right, so Adam's going to pour it in gently. Gently, gently. All right, let's see. Stir it up. Our scientist is working. He's stirring. <clears throat> what does it look like? It looks like snow. All right. Well, it's clumpy. It's clumpy. Ugh. It's cloudy. Would you want to drink this? No. So, so what I want to say about this, sometimes people think that they have Jesus in their heart, but they complain. And they whine. And really, they really don't know Jesus, do they? They think they do, but they don't. Not if you're going to complain about everything. She hurt me. I'm going to hurt her back. I don't like you. You are not nice to me. That's what this is. Clumpy, yucky. All right, now I'm going to give you another spoon. I'm going to give you my assistant. You're going to help me pour. All right, I'm going to give you another spoon. I have another glass for you to hold. All right, now I have baking soda. Baking soda is used to bake. Cakes that are so delicious. All right. Cook, they bake and bake cookies with it. You can hold it. Hold it. All right. Hold up the cup, Waylon. Hold the cup over. We don't want to get it. All right. So the baking soda is people. Well, we're not going to make cookies today. But I bet Miss Jean would like to go home and make cookies. All right. What does the vinegar? What does the vinegar represent? Nope. Re vinegar represents Jesus. All right. Adam, help me pour. All right, now I'm going to do this. Waylon, I'm going to hold this right here because watch. Now, sometimes people get really excited when they first learn about Jesus. And they're like, woohoo! Jesus is great. I love Jesus. And then maybe a couple of days later, they're not so happy. Watch. Are you ready? Adam, help me pour. Whoa. It's sort of like people are excited. And then look what happens. Uh, then they kind of forget about Jesus. Right? talk about Jesus, but they don't really do Jesus things, right? So I'm going to mix this. This is what? Vinegar, and it's Jesus. Hold it. All right, now watch what happens. Hmm. Stir it up. So you're mixing Jesus with some people. All right, let us look at it. Hmm. Does Jesus really mix into their lives? No. They're really not living and doing things like Jesus wants us to do, are they? Is this us? No. No, we don't do that. All right, now I have one more cup. And you're going to get one more spoon. You can hold it, that's fine. All right, what is this? Remember, this is vinegar. 
Did it mix? No, but it drips. It does. I mean, <laughs> it's vinegar. It's water. Does it smell? It smells a little bit like vinegar, not real strong. Remember what that vinegar smelled like. This is what I think you guys are and what all of us are. We have Jesus in our life. We know Jesus. We live Jesus. We do Jesus things. Jesus mixes with us in our life. Right? So sometimes adults will say, walk the talk. Mm -hmm. Walk the talk. So if you know Jesus is in your heart, you're saying to someone else, Jesus loves you. Don't hurt your sister. Jesus would not do that. You're living your life like Jesus. Isn't that cool? Say thank you to Waylon. Thank you, Waylon. Great assistant. Adam, would you like to say a prayer? Okay. Dear God, thank you for this cat and bunny Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, just for translation purposes, um, oil is oil. Just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> Good morning. Does anybody have a joy to lift up today? Yes, ma'am. Third place. Wow. Good to have you. Good to have you. And also, uh, my sister's here. My baby sister's here with her husband, Jeff. Should we make them stand up? No, okay. <laughs> she did not get the, the brother's height. Um, so, <laughs> yes. That is a joy. You can keep the glasses. That's awesome. <laughs> Any, yes, ma'am. Avery got her permit. And that's a joy? Well, it will be until you get the insurance bill. Avery driving a car. Now I know what fear is. Okay, uh, all right. Any others? others okay um, if you haven't had a chance I think there's today is that when it ends Ben the uh, uh, high school's play Mama Mia uh, ends today what time would that be two o'clock and if you hadn't had a chance to go to that that is absolutely great and our very own Ben plays the role as Pepper and Ben dances Ben sings. I'm impressed. He is a Casanova in this movie or in this, this play. Very good last night. It's worth the time. Any others? Are there any uh, concerns we need to, to uh, lift up? Yes, ma'am. Did everybody hear that? Okay. Speak louder. Kimberly, 
So Kimberly's not doing well. So, our Kimberly, yes. Teague, right? Yes. So we'll lift Kimberly in our prayers, yes. Kathy's friend, Charles Brandon, is in ICU in uh, Charlotte. Duke. Duke. Good hospital. Uh, so we lift him in prayers. Others? Remember Gay, remember Dean. Any others to lift up this morning? Yes. Where? Sis, yes, and her whole family. It's time of transition. Yes, Mike. Your daughter's here today. Is that Sam right beside of you? The one from down under, down like like way down there. Good to have you. Any others? If you're able and willing, please take the hand of someone near you as we pray together this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, it is so good to be here. To sing together, to laugh together, to feel your presence. To hear the peaceful sound of Carmela playing the flute today. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing. We celebrate our heritage in this country of our Native Americans. And with that, help us to have a reverence for their way of life and their thoughts and their beliefs and their love for this country as we have that as well. And may there be peace among us. Lord, we've named those who are in need this morning. We pray for Gay and we pray for Dean and for Sis and her family. We pray, pray for Charles this morning. We pray for Kimberly and ask, Lord, that your healing would come upon her. And there are many, Lord, that we have in our hearts that we didn't lift up, Lord, but you know our needs before we ask. And we ask that your blessing be on each. Lord, we pray for the life of our church. You have so blessed us in the last months. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to keep us alive, thriving, and help us to live in faith knowing that you have not forgotten us at all. And help us to be the hands and feet of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may we represent him in this community and in the world. We pray for our upcoming general conference, Lord, and for all of those who travel here, that you would grant your traveling mercies for them and for the decisions of law for our, for our church, Lord. We pray that you would give them wisdom, compassion, spirit, and truth. And help us, Lord, to stay united as a church in the one truth that matters, that your Son is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, who on the third day rose from the grave and lives with us today. Help us to be those Easter people in this world today. Lord, hear us now as we join in one voice, praying the prayer that Jesus, our Savior, taught us, saying, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today, in our lectionary text, it takes us to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24. Uh, we pick up after uh, what we so uh, well know, the two who were on their way to Emmaus and how Jesus broke bread with them and opened their minds to Scripture. So we're going to follow this, that right after this, where he appears to his disciples so we will pick up in verse 36. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you frightened and why do you do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. And then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. 
Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you, until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, as we turn to this time of the foolishness of preaching, I pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts and minds to the power of your word, that you would use this time to speak through this vessel the words that you would have each and every one of us here hear from you today. You know everyone's need and what you need to say to each and every one of us. So take this time however it comes out. Fill this vessel with your words and passion to preach it. And give us ears to hear and hearts to listen. And may it change us to the likeness of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. While they were talking about this, Jesus said to himself, Jesus himself himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you, or shalom. Okay, they're sitting together, not really sure that they really knew what happened with the two on the road to Emmaus, but they're sitting together, and all of a sudden, Jesus appears. Okay, we're in a church council meeting. We're sitting in the fellowship hall, like we always do. Chris is starting the meeting, and Angie's telling him to hurry up. And we're all saying, oh, please, please don't let this be two hours. And, and all of a sudden, as we're going through this time, Jesus shows up. Every door is locked, except for the one we came in. And then all of a sudden, Jesus shows up, body and flesh. Are you going to be scared? I am. Especially in this situation, they just saw him put in the grave. They just saw him die on a cross. And then he shows up. He doesn't knock on the door. He doesn't ring a doorbell. He just shows up, appears. And they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, why are you frightened? Now that's Jesus' humor. And why do doubts arise in your hearts? The one thing that Jesus does always is he cuts through the chase, doesn't he? He knows what our thoughts are. He knows what we're, what we're afraid of. And he knows what we doubt. And he just said, why are you afraid? And he just cuts right to the chase. Why do you doubt what you see? Look at my hands and my feet. Now, why would he say that? What would be on his hands and his feet? Holes, scars. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. Now I want to I take a moment here just, just because this thought came to my mind in the preparation of this. 
Do you remember back a few months ago, it's become a, 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 a phrase that we say often now, uh, a, a scripture that we read where uh, there was this lady at a well. You remember that? And this lady at the well was not a very uh, well-respected lady. You remember that story? And Jesus is there with her. Drawing water, offers her water, remember, and it was called what kind of water? Living water. And then when she realizes that what he's given her is forgiveness and offered her eternal life and the forgiveness of her sins, she runs off and she says, come and s- fill, in, fill in the blank. Come and, come and see. Come and see a man that told me everything about me and still offered me this living water. Now Jesus is saying, touch and see. Now why why would that be? Do you see the, the, the comparison I'm trying to make? Maybe I need to speak it a little bit better. Come and see a man because that man was just like you and me. Alive and well. Had the ability to heal and all of those, had the the ability to raise dead people from the grave. And they all knew that. And something about that was okay. I guess because maybe this guy that stood in front of them that day looked a little bit different. Maybe. So much so that he invites them to, okay, we'll touch Touch me and see. Because why, after all, there's more to seeing is believing, right? I mean, if we touch it, then it's got to be true, right? I would tell you right now to touch the person next to you, but, you know, we can't. It's post-COVID. We can't do that. So just think about that. Or if you're in a situation and you really don't think it's true and you say, I need to what myself? Pinch myself, you know. Come and see. And that speech, everybody would look at that and say, okay, well, I'm going to come and see it. But here it is, the man standing in front of him, and they can't believe it. And they have to touch it. You see where I'm going with that? It just hit me. The difference in that. They had, she had no trouble believing that this man who's performed all of these miracles and offers her living water, she was so, so absolutely convinced that he was Messiah that she even left her jar behind and didn't need any water after all. And now, see, Jesus goes on to tell them right here, remember what I told you. Why do you look in doubt? Look, Remember what I told you. I told you I would die. I told you they would put me in the, in the tomb. And I told you I would rise again. Well, here I am. And there were doubts in their minds. How do we, he later, he said, well, just give me something to, do you have anything to eat? Because that's the one thing we know true, right? If you eat, you're real. Can I have an amen? Jesus has to convince the very ones who stopped what they were doing in all of their lives and followed him for this three-year time of ministry, saw all of these things, and he has to convince them that he is risen, that he is alive.
let me tell you guys, if, uh, if we get warning, if we get a heads up that Jesus might be showing up, let's don't get out the broiled fish, okay? There's something about that that just doesn't make any sense. To offer Jesus broiled fish. You know, they used to do that when I was in school. You know, broiled fish would be on the menu. Number one, it stunk and you knew it was coming. Number two, he might, who's going to look at that and say, oh, I can't wait to eat that. See, when we have fish, what do we do? We, we cover it with all kinds of stuff, right? And then we cook it and deep fry it at that. Then we eat fish. So we don't really like fish. We just like the stuff we put on the fish and the grease that drips from it. We never call it a fish broil, do we? Anyway, that, I'm, I'm going off. And he took it and ate in their presence. Wow. How could they not believe? Well, don't answer this question so that anybody may see it. How many of you believe right now that Jesus has been risen from the grave? You don't need to raise your hands. Don't want you to. Because there may be some among us who doubt. And that's where I want to talk today. I want to get there. I want us to see that today we can't touch and see, can we? He, he ascended into heaven. But we, the only time that we actually say and believe that we know that his physical presence is here is when. This is my body. This is my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. It's the, and when none of us can even explain that. But that's the only time that we really acknowledge that his true presence is here. Or he might be here sometimes, I don't know, when we come across someone who might be in need. And he's wanting to see if we're going to respond. I don't know. They followed this man, and here he is standing in front of them, just appeared, and they didn't even believe it. Don't down someone because they have doubts. What do we do with that? What do we do when we have doubts? Are there times in your life when you doubt that Jesus is here? Come on now, that's, that's a question you need to answer. Because if you answer that, no, there's not a time in my life, you're not telling the truth. There was an event that happened in my life just a few weeks ago. Absolutely ripped me apart. I couldn't sleep for days. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But it happened to a member of my family. And I had to say, Jesus, where were you? Where were you at? How many can testify to that this morning? Can say, you know, I've had moments in my life where I didn't understand this. Every one of those 11 was 12. Remember, one betrayed him. Every one of those 11 gathered there. See, they didn't get what they were expecting, did they? What they really wanted was this person to come and stand in front of them, and they, he would be the king of all kings and the lord of all lords, and everybody else would suddenly bow to him. And he, because they were his chosen 11, then everybody, too, would bow to them as well. And they would be the powers that be. Am I right? That's what they were really looking for. 
But what they saw was a man humiliated in front of them and actually die, breathe his last in front of them. Death to us is final, isn't it? Now, you know it is. But the one thing I do know here for us, just so we'll understand what I'm trying to say here, for us as Christians, we know that it's just the portal. We know that once that death comes to us, for those who believe, we are going to what will be the truth of life. Amen? Going to the heaven that is prepared for us. And for that, we have hope. For that reason, we have hope, we have joy in our hearts. We don't want to die, do we? There's been times when I may have said that, oh, I wish I was dead right now for something I just said, you know, or just did, right? But we really don't mean that, right? Touch me and see. See, I can't stand before you today and say, touch. Touch him. Because I can't make him appear. But for them, that's what he said to them for their doubts. And then eat some fish so you'll understand it. Now, Jesus is going to something here. This wasn't just a chance meeting. He had a message to share with them. And that's what I want us to come to this morning. Because we need to hear it. Today in Epworth United Methodist Church, more than anything else, we need to hear this message that Jesus brought to them that day. He went on to say, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, what would that be? The Torah, the first five books, the prophets, and that's pretty much a lot of the rest of the Bible in the Old Testament, really. And then in, even in the Psalms, the songs that we're saying, that it must be fulfilled. He's reminding them that he is the Messiah. He goes on to say, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead and on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be, to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. Now, when I read that scripture to you a while ago, how many of you remembered that part? That in all of this appearance with God, with Jesus, his son, the one who suffered, bled, and died, and rose from that grave, because there he was, who says, touch me and see, how many of you remembered this part? That I told you that it was there, that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his names to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. See, Jesus is pushing them to what their next steps are. And he says, you are witnesses of these things. Because I just said that to you, whether it's the first time you've ever heard it or not. And for most people in this congregation, you've heard this story many times. Amen. You are witnesses of these things. You and I are those witnesses today. We weren't there that day. We can't touch him and see him. But how many of you have ever felt his presence? Ooh, that'll preach right there, won't it? You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending you what my Father promised so that here in the city you have been, until you have been, or stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And we know the story of that, don't we? know the rest of that story, Right? He has this moment where there's several other things that we know where he's, he's been with his disciples and others so that they could see him after the resurrection. And then there's that time where the disciples are, are standing still and they look up. What's that day we call that? 
some 50 days from this moment they called Pentecost where he rises and goes into heaven. And the disciples are standing there gawking up and the angel comes and says, why are you looking up into heaven? He told you what to do. And here it is. You are witnesses of things. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you are a witness. You can say it that way if you want to. Jesus is relying on you and I to be those very people who witness to someone else that he suffered, he bled, he died, and he rose from the grave. Repentance and forgiveness has become our job, has become our way of life. And any of you who sit here today thinking that you really don't need any repentance, that you really don't need any forgiveness because you've reached that moment where you're perfect. If you're sitting in here today, then I'm not speaking to you. I'm only speaking to those people we call sinners. Now look at your neighbor and say, I think that might be you. (laughs) Don't say that. My sister just looked at my wife. She did not look to her right to her husband. She looked to my wife and said, I think that's you. I guess we're going to have a pretty good lunch. We are Easter people. And in all the mess that goes along with being the church, if we forget that, then we aren't church. And here we are in the midst of one thing. We, I'm going to get real down to the nitty-gritty. Is that okay with y'all? Is that okay with y'all? This is called preaching. And preaching to the time that we have. We will complain about not having enough. We will point fingers back and forth about why we don't have enough. When all we need is people more and more and more people that are lost who don't know Jesus. And we will point our fingers at each other inside the church until we absolutely devour ourselves when all we really need to do is to be witnesses of these things. When we share that story, however it comes out in our hearts and in our minds, you don't have to be trained to know that. You've already been trained. You know all the events, don't you? By now, you know all of the events that took place, right? You do, right? That's when people in the church say, yes, don't hold back. Because this is what makes the difference in the world. This is why God the Creator created the world. This is why God the Creator created His only Son and brought Him to us. This is the reason He came, walked among us, healed us, spoke to us, loved us, ate with us. And this is why He came and died for us. So that we can take repentance and forgiveness and actually live a life that is forgiven. And there are many people in the world today who that's all they want to hear. Don't tell me all this other stuff you need for me. Just tell me the truth that I'm forgiven. We don't need people to come to church to pay the bills brothers and sisters, and if that's your motivation for getting someone else to come to church, it will die. It will not last. 
because that's not why we exist. We exist so that those who are outside those doors and sitting in our pews today will know that Jesus suffered, bled, and died for them and that here they will live in the hope of that salvation. Whew. Now I'm getting wound up. And I'm going to leave it right there because it's not time for me anymore. I'm always going to be wound up. Have y'all figured that out? Well, I'm wanting you to be wound up for Jesus because this community needs it. And they need it from you. And you are witnesses to these things. And all of God's people said, amen. If our ushers could come forward, please. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all that you've given to us. And for the portion that we return to you, we ask, Lord, that you would bless it to the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
can join in singing our hymn of de dedication, number 148, in your hymnal, number 148. Let's offer a hand for Camilla Hedrick, Carmela, and her husband Tim. Amen. Back any time. Go forth in peace, knowing that God did all of this for you. And only ask that you share it with someone else so that his kingdom may grow. For you have to know and believe that when Jesus went to the cross, he went for all people, his desire for all people to be at his feet in heaven. And yours is to get them there. Amen. Amen.